Hello and welcome to Business Standard. Here's a glimpse of the views expressed on the web pages of Business Standard this week. In his weekly column National Interest, Shekhar Gupta says Uttar Pradesh and Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath has seen little change for the better, but his personal political fortunes have soared enough to compete for headlines with Prime Minister Modi. Ask any BJP leader in any state who are the three speakers guaranteed to attract a crowd and who all of them want. Is Modi, of course, but the second is Yogi. The third is relative newbie Tejasvi Surya. But the hard political fact is, what Yogi does today, others in the BJP do tomorrow. Gupta writes, his personality, power, and politics are unique. He hasn't done very much good for his state in terms of law enforcement or the economy. But Modi and Shah will now need him if they want to win UP again in 2022 and India in 2024. This signals a Yogi Adityanath-sized change in BJP politics. Even under Modi, Gupta says, a consumption boost through continued payouts for another year to those at the bottom of the pyramid, and still more money for the employee guarantee scheme should be in order. Right, Steen Nainen in his weekly column for the Business Standard, he says that the number of those who have been pushed back into poverty in India is believed to be the largest in the world. For funding relief measures, Nainen suggests imposing a one-time levy on those who have benefited from the stock market boom. or who can be expected to have a substantial excess of income over expenditure although the measure will be unpopular nainen says that its fallout can be contained by credibly committing that the levies are strictly one time and ensuring that the money is used only to deal with the covid fallout why can't states opposed to farm laws be allowed to accept them later as ak batacharya in his column for business standard Let the Punjab farmers and the state government evaluate how the new laws impact the agricultural sector in other states which are ready to implement them. If after a couple of years the Punjab farmers see merit in these laws, they could volunteer to accept them, Bhattacharya says. For instance, the UPA government had rolled out the state value added tax system from April 2005, but at the time of its launch, as many as 8 states had stayed out. The reasons ranged from a lack of preparation to reservations about the tax regime. yet all those states joined the new tax system a few years later with the three farm laws in question the modi government could try out something similar but acharya writes mahesh vyas in his weekly column for business standard unpacks the enigma behind the indian economy's better than expected recovery he says the apparent sustained recovery beyond the festival season implies that the recovery factors are beyond just pent up demand and festive demand these factors are a mix of the spread of employment rise in household incomes and also positive perceptions about personal and economy wide recovery together summarized as consumer sentiment in 2019 consumer sentiment averaged 106 until the lockdown in april last year brought it down to 46 the index averaged less than 43 during may june and july last year A small recovery in the index began in August. Then, in the December quarter, the index nearly touched 53. This recovery in the index of consumer sentiment, split by income groups, reflects India's weird K-shaped recovery post the lockdown. Vyas writes in a column for Business Standard. Akash Prakash lists a few factors that might point to a bubble in the financial markets. Bitcoin shows all the price action of a huge bubble. Prakash says, from its lows in 2019, it's up a thousand percent. For the US technology space, the outperformance of the mega caps is well known, but this is not where we see bubble behavior. The price action is much more exaggerated for the smaller software as a service or SaaS companies, unprofitable tech stocks and recent IPOs. Tesla is now the sixth largest company by market value in the world at about 800 billion dollars. Its value is equal to 80% of the entire US, EU and Japan's auto market value. excluding Tesla itself this is for a company that sold 500000 cars in 2020 but when adjusted for interest va- rates valuations are not in no split territory record low rates justify higher equity valuations but how high that remains a debate writes prakash in a column for business standard kp krishnan takes a look at sebi's recent review of the current ownership and governance norms regulating stock exchanges and depositories The purpose of the move is to facilitate entry of more entities and increase competition in the space, Krishnan says. But are these firms just businesses? In what ways are they special? There's a small problem and there's a big problem here, he says. The small problem is that exchanges tend to be a natural monopoly. In most countries, the bulk of activity has concentrated into one main exchange. 
And the big problem is that such firms are the front lines of regulation. They're similar to a regulator with rule making functions, enforcement of the rules that it makes, and some enforcement of the rules that the securities regulator makes. Therefore, SEBI's proposal could disrupt the balance between the supervisory and business roles of stock exchanges, Krishnan writes. In a column for Business Standard, Rajesh Kumar analyzes the broad options before Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman in structuring the budget. There are at least two ways to approach the budget, Kumar writes. One, the focus can be on the next financial year. The economy is recovering and growth is set to rebound sharply. The other approach would be to consider it a starting point and rebuild the economy to attain the long-term goal of sustained higher growth. The second approach is key as the Indian economy was losing momentum even before the pandemic. Besides, the global economy will not be as supportive as it was in recent decades. The world economy is slowing structurally and global debt has expanded significantly. Such changes will directly affect India. Essentially, India will need to do a lot more in terms of broad reforms to attain the desired level of growth in the coming years, Kumar says. Of the many fallouts of COVID, perhaps the most economically salient one is the relative income shift from the bottom of the pyramid to the top that's playing out globally, writes Sajid Chinoy in a column for Business Standard. This is demand impeding given the higher propensity to save at the top, he says. Against this backdrop, can India's consumption growth go back to its 7% pre-COVID average? Will an export pickup, if juxtaposed against uncertain domestic demand, be enough to stoke a private investment revival in India? Or will firms look through the next few quarters and remain cautious? It's against this backdrop that fiscal support cannot be withdrawn too quickly in 2021. Monetary policy was the prime mover last year but will eventually face diminishing returns and remains a blunt instrument. The baton must therefore pass from monetary to fiscal in 2021, Chinoy writes. India's economic recovery so far has been fairly uneven, writes Business Standard in an editorial. This is partly reflected in the rising stock market as well. It's also likely that economic disruption had a disproportionate impact on small-scale businesses because of the limited capability to withstand such shocks. This might have shifted production to relatively large and organized firms. Both firms and households with stronger balance sheets are doing well, but a large part of the economy continues to suffer. This K-shaped recovery may not sustain, the editorial says. Besides, the data suggests that informality has grown in the labor market after the pandemic and the economic recovery is not accompanied by a proportionate increase in labor demand. The editorial says addressing these issues would be a key challenge for the upcoming union budget. India's Republic Day is a festive occasion, but on this year's iteration of the national festival, divisions in the country's politics were on open and tragic display, business standard rights in an editorial. The agitating farmers who received permission to hold a tractor rally inside Delhi city limits after being at the border for months broke out of the previously agreed route and went so far as to storm the Red Fort's ramparts and raise a religious flag there. This is an unacceptable escalation of a previously peaceful protest, even after the government has offered to state the new laws. It seems the farmers have taken an all-or-nothing approach with the government, the editorial says. In an editorial, Business Standard takes a look at the third quarter performance of corporate India so far. The results of 284 listed companies offer an encouraging snapshot of corporate performance, the editorial says. Compared to the year-ago quarter, net sales have remained flat for the sample, but operating profits have risen over 30% on the back of lower interest costs and raw material expenses. Profit after tax has risen over 90%. But if volatile sectors such as banks and refineries are excluded, net sales have risen about 10% for the rest of the companies, while profit after tax is up over 50%. That's still quite encouraging, even discounting the low base effect. Overall, these are still early days, and typically, companies with weak performance tend to declare the results towards the end of the earnings season. Nevertheless, the early trends signal a turnaround by corporate India, the editorial says. Among the significant executive orders US President Joe Biden signed in his first week in office, Buy American was notable for its Trumpian overtones and for creating some concerns among US businesses and allies. Business Standard writes in an editorial. The order seeks to tighten rules for federal government procurement programs, limiting foreign contracts by 
federal agencies to encourage economic activity and job creation in the US. As a political signal, it's a powerful one. The obvious questions come up about how it differs from Donald Trump's America First policy and whether it will exclude allies from one of the world's largest government procurement programs at $600 billion a year, the editorial says. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.